reality, let's revisit a simpler time. Back in the years 1999 to 2004, where we had seasons one to three of SpongeBob. When SpongeBob was just starting out as a fry cook and things were, well, just simpler. In Spongy's world and ours, looking back at when I was 11 years old and first saw these episodes airing, they often left me feeling uncomfortable or even upset. But at the time, I couldn't exactly put into words why. They might have had forgettable plots or character derailment or just some serious missteps for the soon-to-be-famous Sponge. So let's check out what I consider the six worst classic Spongebob episodes. And I think it's important to mention, my deepest respects go to Steven Hilberg and the rest of the crew behind the show nowadays too. Even if we have subpar episodes, I love Spongebob and the crew behind it. And this is all meant in good fun. Anyway, on to the countdown. And starting out at number six, Dumped. Jeepers, we're off to a lousy start. Even the opening music is a downer this time. On Twitter, this was definitely one of the most requested episodes, with a lot of people finding it just anger-inducing or hurtful to watch. Gary, no! 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 Don't do it, Gary! Yes, no, Gary! But even without the nasty stuff, honestly, there just aren't that many real jokes in this one. The first half is almost entirely just watching Spongy and Patrick run around playing and laughing with almost no intelligible dialogue to speak of. Which I guess would have been okay for younger viewers, but it wouldn't be making the parents glance over much. But the main issue many people have with this episode is we're just watching Spongy's slow, sad belief that Gary no longer cares about him, as he suddenly won't leave Patrick alone and completely ignores Spongebob. No jokes or clever dialogue, or anything in between to even slightly lighten the mood. Just this continual rejection of Spongebob. What's wrong with me? <laughs> Do I offend? And it's hard not to feel bad for him. As much as Spongy tries though, he just can't win Gary back. As Patrick begins to realize this, he basically becomes a condescending jerk. He then takes full custody of Gary. Well, well, well. Jeez, Patrick, what a turd you've become. He even goes as far as to exploit SpongeBob while he's in a state of misery near the end. Thankfully, he does get his comeuppance when the two discover that Gary was only following Patrick for the cookie in his pocket. And yes, Gary does get the cookie in the end. And Spongy's companion returns. Let's go for a walk, pal. Number five. It's too late. Grandma's Kisses. Kissy, kissy, kissy. <laughs> oh dear. I remember watching this episode 19 years ago now, and it was a horrendous way to cap off season two. SpongeBob has this way of walking a very fine tightrope throughout the seasons, trying to find that careful balance of being kid-friendly and entertaining, but also having enough adult humor and character relatability to be at least interesting to adults. Unfortunately, Grandma's Kisses misses this line by a wide mile and feels childish, silly, kind of cruel and just awkward half the time. For some reason, half the town seems to have absolutely nothing to do with their lives, and hound Spongebob for being at peace with his inner child. What do they mock him endlessly for? Receiving a kiss from his grandma. Oh, come on, really, guys? If anything, I'd miss my grandma on seeing that. Why would full-grown adults make fun of a guy for having a healthy connection to his family? <laughs> Seriously, what is wrong with this town? Why are they doing this? Well, I guess because it suits the plot for everyone to act like seven-year-old school bullies with massive insecurities about their masculinity. Even the girls for some reason. Shouldn't they think that's cute? I don't know. SpongeBob eventually gives in to the harassment and starts acting mature. Kisses are for babies, which I am no longer. I have grown up. Why does Spongy become an office worker, though? Some of the office workers I know tend to be very immature and very gossipy. Unfortunately, while Spongy's trying his best to be mature, we have to watch some very cringy scenes with Patrick. But the worst part of this episode? The part I just can't seem to fully exercise from my mind? Watching adult Spongebob throw a childish tantrum in front of his grandma. It's just... ugh. Come on, Spongy, you can do better than this. SpongeBob already shows he's mature enough daily. He can act young at heart and embrace his childishness with a free spirit. That takes a lot of maturity, way more than people insecure about their masculinity trying to act mature. The message just feels muddled. Like, at the end, Granny just states what SpongeBob already knew. You can kiss your grandma and still be an adult. Here you go. 
Yet at the end, everyone is still making fun of him. Seriously, these random citizens just need to grow up. More than ever before, we just don't know how many more days we'll get with our loved ones. Particularly our older family. So I say, give your older family a big bear hug whenever you see them. And for the fourth worst. Party Pooper Pants. While it's pretty clear that SpongeBob is a serious perfectionist, this episode just did not feel true to his character. I remember first seeing this episode, and even then, I just wanted Spongy to quit wrecking everyone's fun. He comes off as really cringeworthy and a major control freak, and I ended up just feeling bad for both SpongeBob and his guests. It feels bad because his party is going so well, yet he keeps trying to actively sabotage it. What's going on here? The laughter isn't scheduled until 9.03. You want to throw a party? Do it at your house, Patrick. Sure, SpongeBob can be a perfectionist, but in any normal episode, he's far more concerned with his friends just having a good time than doing everything by the book. And the whole episode consists of this same painful, drawn-out joke. No, 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 no! SpongeBob is obsessively controlling about his party and doesn't get the message for 20 minutes straight that it just doesn't matter. As long as people are enjoying themselves, who cares how it happens? As a kind of monk-like introvert myself, even I know a good party can be really hard to create. Thankfully, SpongeBob gets locked out while the actual party begins. So the poor guy has a meltdown. Oh no! The party's falling into chaos without my hosting talents to guide it! The patchy segments are interspersed in between and they're okay, I guess, but nothing to write home about. I do like the creative costumes, but it's mostly just Patchy trying to sabotage his own party like Spongy was. Though I do really like the joke with Spongy receiving Patchy's invitation. Whoever sent this obviously has no idea about the physical limitations of life underwater. Well, might as well throw these in the fire. And this is downright good party advice right here. A short guest list consisting of only your closest acquaintances will set an intimate tone for the evening and provide soiree success. Well, you heard the man, Gary. Only our closest friends. Plus, the Underwater Sun song is pretty catchy at the end. Down, down, down. Oh, we'll have lots of fun. And the third worst. It's too late. Krabby Land. This one mainly shows Mr. Krab at his cheapest and arguably most amoral. I don't care about the children! I just care about their parents' money! Like to the point where it's not even that funny anymore. He builds a dangerous playground out of rubbish for kids, trying to get them to sign waivers if they get hurt. Charming. And for the rest of the episode, we're just watching him not care as SpongeBob is tortured and put through continual agony to entertain kids. There are just very few funny moments here, and SpongeBob continually hurting himself just didn't make me laugh and mostly made me cringe. It's not that I don't like some slapstick, I love Looney Tunes. Duck season, fire! <laughs> but most of these just feel more painful than cartoony. I mean, who really wants to see SpongeBob burn his eyes? Or rip his eyes out? <laughs> Ew, or run over his tongue? <laughs> like, that scream really sounds like it hurts. Or most grotesque of all, having him force-fed lima beans. <laughs> And Krabs is completely uncaring as SpongeBob continues to be ripped and cut to pieces over and over. Mr. Krabs, I can't take much more of this stalling stuff. Always thinking about yourself. But hey, at least Mr. Krabs loses his cash at the end of the episode. And then he too has to feel SpongeBob's greatest agony of all. Eating lime beans. Seriously, give me broccoli over those any day. And for the second worst, the Great Snail Race. Faster, Gary! Faster! 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 This episode's notorious for SpongeBob going completely out of character and mistreating his friend Gary, whom in previous episodes said he'd do anything for. I'm a wreck without you! What do you think, Gary? Wanna be fun, Gary? I mean, I'm all for encouraging exercise and training hard. Over the years, there have been many times I've pushed myself to my limits in marathon training. You can't really see just how high this is. But I wanted to, and Gary doesn't seem at all to want to train. And he definitely demonstrates less than overtraining too quickly. SpongeBob basically forces him into training for 24 hours straight. Come on, Gary, move it! Up, 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 down, 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 down,
when he's clearly at his absolute limit. And Spongy's doing all of this just to prove to Squidward that Gary is better than his purebred snail. And it's pretty out of character for Spongy to be so antagonized or goaded by Squidward at all. Normally he just turns the other cheek and laughs. That's part of what I like about him. Most of the jokes are pretty lousy too, particularly by the halfway point. Since it's a snail race, most of the jokes are, well, related to snails being slow. Which sadly also means that the story moves at a snail's pace. The whole episode, they're just beating the same dead horse. Gary's not ready, he's exhausted, he's suffering, and he didn't even want to race in the first place. But SpongeBob just keeps pushing him anyway. And it's not even slightly funny or interesting to see. Get the anchors out of your pants right now! Exhausted to the point of collapsing. Gary's eyes explode. Ugh. He loses control and crashes horribly. It's just sad to watch. On, Gary. I'm coming. And seriously, Squidward, laughing over Gary suffering a brutal crash. For shame, man. That's too cruel even for you. Though I will say, this was a really funny joke. She's a purebred. Wow, a snail made out of bread. And Patrick's pet, uh, Rock, winning the race. That was a kind of awesome way to end it. It's a shame we never see this snail again. I feel like Squidward could have used a quiet companion. Look how happy Gary makes Spongebob. Well, anyway. And before we get to number one, just a few quick honorable mentions. New student starfish. The majority of it just involves Patrick getting Spongebob in trouble with Mrs. Puff. This leads him into a petty squabble and getting detention. They do learn to work together at the end. But this episode just isn't very funny or charming, certainly for a classic episode. Squilliam Returns. I really disliked the ending to this one, where the rug is pulled under Squidward's legs. Considering that Band Geeks and even House Fancy has a more satisfying outcome, this episode left a bad taste in my mouth. In fact, just as nasty as Crab's appetizer. It's the appetizer! <laughs> Squeaky Boots. This one is surprisingly divisive among Spongebob fans. It's mainly remembered due to Spongy's annoying new squeaky boots and the constant squeaky noise they make. I uh, see you're still wearing them boots. But I actually found this joke kind of funny in repetition. And I like how it shows Crab's slowly increasing guilt after he scams Spongebob. Anyway, with those said, on to number one. And I think easily, the number one worst classic Spongebob episode is... I'm with Stupid. Ugh. I've heard people say they still haven't fully forgiven Patrick for this episode yet. And sadly, I kind of agree with them. I almost feel like this was the point of no return episode for him. Where Patrick first crosses the line between being charmingly silly and obnoxiously awful and selfish. Because he becomes so outrageously rude towards Spongebob. When Patrick's parents come over to visit him, he panics because of their lack of respect towards him and his stupidity. So Spongebob offers to act stupid to make Patrick's parents think their son is smarter by comparison. When your parents see how dumb I act, they'll think you're the smartest guy ever! But for some reason, Patrick soon starts believing that Spongebob is actually stupid. And then the barrage of insults on Spongebob begins. To the point where we're just watching this long drawn out scene of Patrick and his uh, parents mocking and laughing at Spongebob. And it just goes on and on. Hey Spongebob, do you have any mascara I could borrow? It's an episode that's almost painful to sit through. Like I had to keep psyching myself up into hitting the play button because I kept pausing the cringy episode. On a side note, does anyone else find Spongebob's helmet kind of tasteless? I think little details like that probably wouldn't have flown as well in 2020. But I guess the year 2000 was a very different time in a lot of ways. Anyway, it gets even worse when Spongebob practically begs Patrick to stop. But he just keeps mocking and jeering at Spongebob. So, what's on your mind? No, wait! I, I already know the answer! Nothing! <laughs> and it just keeps going. Pointing and jeering and mocking and just... Ugh, oh, make it end already. <laughs> now he's short-circuiting. You must have taught him a little too much. <laughs> Why is Spongebob even hanging out with these awful people? Just leave Patrick's house and go home. Take Gary for a walk or something or go see Sandy. They like you as you are. In a moment of pure relief, he finally leaves Patrick's rock. 
but not before going insane with frustration. But wait, it turns out those weren't Patrick's parents anyway, making this episode completely pointless to what poor Spongy was originally trying to help his friend with, impressing his parents. Patrick's real parents do turn up at the end though. Hopefully they're a little nicer to people than the uh, weirdos Patrick invited in. What happened to Spongy though? We never see. Hopefully he's alright. Anyway, I can say quite easily this is my absolute least favourite episode of the first three seasons. In other words, the worst classic Spongebob episode. Although some people consider early Spongebob to be a timeless section of cartoon history, back then much of the characters' personalities were still being developed. The characters I nowadays just assume were always like that. The fact that the show's creators could repeatedly strike lightning so many times in early seasons really was a testament to the sheer effort they put into this show. And today as well, I still have tons of respect for this show's team, and I hope to see Spongy keep showing up on my TV for many more years. And if you've got any lousy classic episodes you think I missed, feel free to leave your own thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.